Oh, oh, big wave. Big wave. Oh, oh. Hello, everyone. Mr. Kelly here. I've been so fortunate to be saved by these brave men and women behind me. One of the RNLI, the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. And these brave volunteers go out most days to make sure everybody's safe out at sea. If anybody gets stranded out in the waves or out in the storms, they help rescue them on these amazing motor-powered lifeboats. And Mr. Kelly's been lucky here. I've got my position on the boat, getting taken safely to shore. But amazingly, for this history assembly, you're going to learn about somebody who, almost 200 years ago now, saved nine lives out at sea. And this lady called Grace Darling, who was only 22 at the time, saved nine people. Not with the motor-powered lifeboat like this one I'm on, but by rowing out in a boat, risking her life to save the lives of nine others. What's amazing about this story is Grace Darling was from Northumberland, which is close to where Mr. Kelly's from in Newcastle. And she saved nine people who were travelling from Yorkshire, close to where we are in school, all the way to Scotland. And they got stuck and stranded in the storm. And she risked her life save the lives of nine other people. But you're watching a video of her life story now and find out how amazing this life-saving experience really was. But now, my hood up, got to ride up the waves and back to safety. Whoa! Whoa! Holding on for dear life. Bye everyone. I'm going to tell you something about my life. My name is Grace Darling. I was born in the year 1815 in Northumberland. I would have had a very ordinary life were it not for something that happened one stormy night. The story of that night is the story I shall tell. The first thing you should know is that my father was a lighthouse keeper and when I was growing up the lighthouse was my home. It was my father's job to light the lantern at the top of the lighthouse every night so that sailors out to sea would see it and steer their ships clear of dangerous rocks. Their lives depended on it. Lighthouses were built round and tall so that they could stand up against the storms which would whirl around us rather often. There was just one room on each floor with a spiral staircase running round the edge from one floor to the next. My bedroom had round walls without corners and I loved it. When we visited relatives on the mainland, their square rooms never felt quite right. I love the sea. I spent a lot of time looking at it and thinking of the sailors out there, somewhere, looking back at the lighthouse. And that's how I grew up in our little world of round rooms and routines. The sea was a constant companion. I learned to read it like a book. I spent so much time looking at it, I knew what weather was coming whether there was a warm breeze on its way and with it birds from Africa, or whether a storm was brewing and I needed to lash our rowing boat down extra tight. One evening as we sat down to supper, I knew a storm was on its way. What I didn't know was quite what a ferocious storm it would turn out to be. We 
We sat round the table with the sound of the storm gathering strength all around us. the lookout for ships all through the night. At five o'clock, my watch was nearly over, and I was about to go and wake father to take his turn when something told me to take one more look. It was then that I saw it. It was a ship that must have struck the rocks. From what I could see in the flash of light from the lightning, it looked like it had split in two. I looked hard for any sign of survivors. The waves were like mountains and it was hard to see anything at all. But then I saw something. I waited for the next wave to pass and then I was sure. There were people in the water. I ran to fetch father. He could see them too. I knew if we didn't take our tiny boat and try and rescue them, that they wouldn't survive for long in the icy sea. I knew we had to try. The sea was more vast and more wild than I'd ever seen it, but still, I was not afraid. Mother came, and she said there was little hope for them in such a dreadful storm. She didn't want us to go, but I couldn't just watch from the window when we had a chance to save their lives. It must have been hard for her to watch us leave, and even harder to wait and hope for our safe return. Once we were in the boat, I knew we were doing the right thing. As I rowed, I tried to think only of the people in the water and how we were their only hope. Not of how cold my hands were, how the rain stung my cheeks and how every wave seemed bigger than the last. We were a tiny boat in an enormous raging sea. Father looked out for signs of the survivors. At last, we spotted someone a short way from the boat. I pulled harder still to reach him. Then father had to haul the poor soul over the side and into the boat, whilst I tried my best to keep us steady. The waves were coming over the sides. At any moment, one big wave could swamp us and we'd all be drowned for sure. But still, we kept on. And still, I was not afraid. There were more people in the water. I rowed harder still to reach them. pulled as many as he could into the boat, till our tiny boat could carry no more. I rowed us back towards the light of the lighthouse, as hard as the strength left in my arms would allow. I don't know how many drowned in that terrible storm. But we had saved nine souls who would otherwise have surely perished. I suppose I had been brave. Only when we returned did I feel the full weight of what I had done. 
I had not been afraid. But the sea, so vast and wild, could so easily have taken us. I knew then that we were lucky to have made it back to shore. I was so glad of the breaking dawn and a lull in the storm as we crossed the rocks. The rocks felt so solid beneath my feet, they felt like home itself. Mother was waiting for us with blankets. She said she knew we would return, but I was so relieved to be back in that little round room. Mother had made hot soup to warm us. Then, exhausted, they slept where they could. I looked at them lying there, and I felt grateful. Grateful that I had found the bravery inside me to row out into that storm and grateful that the sea had chosen to deliver us safely back. The next morning, the storm had passed and we could send them on their way. Saying goodbye, I felt like my life in some way would always be connected to theirs. But my story doesn't end there. What happened next was the strangest thing. Somehow, news of our rescue spread. People from newspapers came all the way out to the lighthouse to see me. Painters came to paint my portrait. Maybe because it was a girl that rode out in that storm. It made a good story. Maybe I had been brave. But I had lived such an ordinary life of round rooms and routines that I didn't know what to make of all the fuss. People wrote me letters. Some sent gifts. But of all the gifts, the one I treasured, the one most precious of all, was this, this locket. Inside it are nine hairs, one from each of the people whose lives I helped to save. <laughs>